Hey there, hi there, ho there, hello there. My name is Adam, welcome back to the channel of Putty Inc. Uh, today's project, I have a trailer here that hauls around my friend Hudson, it's his dad, uh, has a hoof trimming chute. We did a little welding on that before in a previous video. We'll add that at the end, that way I can try and strum up a few more views. Uh, it's got uh, a broken cross member and a fender that's flopping around looser than your uncle's, you know what, after he got caught selling bootleg DVDs, you know, that's a federal crime, so I did a little time, and it was not good. All right, let's get kicking. Right there, big old crack in it that uh, Hudson's dad tried to weld up, did an okay job, lasted a while, he had a display on the bottom, I think he said there's a there's a crack somewhere in here. He did a good job of dressing it up because you can't see it anymore after he welded it up. But uh, what we're going to do is slice this whole thing out. Uh, we're going to add a section in the middle. We'll put some stubs in there, cut it diagonally so it's not just a sheer cut. Um, there's so much stuff attached to the end of this tube that it'd just be a real pain in the ass to cut the whole thing out. So we'll just replace the broken section in the middle. This is where like the, the chute rides on, so it must vibrate and crack and it holds a lot of weight. So, a lot of trailer manufacturers use the lightest duty steel they can get away with. So, we're going to add a nice big heavy chunk in there and some stubs, some heavy stubs in there too or whatever to reinforce it. So, it should do good for them for quite a while. So, let's get to cut. Get this thing up in the air, then we'll get to cut. All right, we got a big old crack here. No surprise that it's right at the end. Of this piece of metal or whatever this piece of metal is really adding some serious substance to this piece so it's gonna break one place or another here or there and actually if you weld at the bottom well he didn't but just the end of the weld here the heat you know that changes the material enough and can make it brittle so it, where it ends here it's no surprise that it cracked or whatever so but he's put a lot of miles a lot of rough miles on this thing so we'll get this thing sliced out get a new one welded in Alrighty, uh, first thing I'm going to do is just measure in between these frame rails here. There's enough other uh, rails holding this thing together, but I just want to make sure that it doesn't go too wide, too narrow. So we'll get a measurement, make sure it stays the same. Seeing as this thing's cracked almost all the way through, I'm guessing that uh, if it would have spread, it was going to spread I know anyway. So let's do that. Go over there. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Safety first, kids. 
something sound right, boy. Sound right, boy. Here it is, cooled down. Uh, it's in there. Feels good. It's nice and level and straight. Measurements all lined up. Uh, we got her fully welded all the way around, plus some rosette welds. Uh, I'll go over on the board exactly what I did here or whatever. Um, you saw it in progress, but we'll, we'll kind of break it down and I'll do my best uh, Bob Ross on the old whiteboard over there. But uh, there it is. I also did this here. I don't know if that's in camera. That is. Uh, this fender was clapping loose, so we took and uh, cleaned up all the old, cut off all the old weld, ground it down, added a gusset. So he said he's never had a problem with any of the other fenders breaking off just this front portion right here. I'd imagine it's because it's on the passenger side. He's not a good driver. Just kidding, Neil. As you saw the cross member, super accurate and straight drawing here, as you can see. Also awesome marker. Oh, there we go, right at the right part of it. Uh, I think it had a crack right here. But it also had been welded here in the weld. The plate on the bottom had stopped. So I'm guessing that's just gonna create a, a stress point. The best uh, situation that could have been done there initially was if you had taken a plate the whole way across, but probably made do with what you had. Just trying to strengthen up one point, you know, you just kinda, it, it's all light material, as you can see, you know, it's like, the trailer manufacturers, like I said, typically use the lowest gauge stuff that they can get away with. So, and I don't think they expect the trailer to last, you know, 20 years, you know, they do, but at the same time, not every day, you know? So, uh, what we did, all right, right, is take that there. We took and cut all that shit out and we cut it at a 45, like so, right? This one got cut at a 45. And then we took, drilled some holes, plasmic some holes, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't drill them. Lazy. Drill holes here to do what we call rosette welds. And then I took a piece that was smaller and that fit inside here on both sides, you know. Part of my amazing drawing skills here, right? But the pieces that fit inside there, they were snug. You watched me do a bit of hammering. Then we made our other piece, you know, that obviously went like this, okay, and we had the rosette welds here as well, and we welded this. I left a nice gap here so that we could fill in with weld all the way, all the way around, and then we rosette welded, rosette welded, plug weld, whatever you want to call it. So 
this is my idea on a good solution for this. There was a whole bunch of stuff on each side that needed to be cut off and welded to a new brace and frankly not interested in doing that and that's when stuff starts getting out of whack and uh, I don't think it needed to be done. The metal on that side was fine. The center portion here on the old one, there's a uh, hook trim chute that rides on there. It's probably wearing the metal in those spots that it cracked and on top of the fact that it's just putting all the weight and force on it there. So this ended up being a much thicker piece of metal that came from stock and it wasn't rusted out. Like the inside of these, we're starting to see some pretty good rust. Uh, we got to clean out as best we could. But uh, <clears throat> So yeah, the thought is, is you're going to have shear pressure going down like this. If we would have just done a weld, right, let's say we wouldn't have done any, any of this here. We just would have done a straight weld like this. But well, uh, you have a, a perfect place to shear right here. Whereas if we do it at a 45, you don't have that. I stole this idea. This is not an original thought by myself. Unless it's a total fucking dipshit move, then you know you can give me credit for it. But uh, I see, I see when they do uh, frames, when they sharpen frames like uh, C10 pickups. You know they're worth a billion dollars now. Uh, as long as they're a short bed version, well, the long bed versions they make a kit where you cut like 14 inches out of the center. And when you do it, I do believe I've seen they actually do a cut more like this, like a step cut, like if this is your frame rail. And that's because you don't want to have that shear point where if you would have just done a butt joint, you do this and you're spreading out the weld and the weight of everything, it makes for a stronger weld. They also fish plate over it, right? I could have fish plated here, I guess, but I didn't think that was necessary being that we had these, these plugs on the inside, so. But that's today's, uh, Terrible or amazing welding tips by your boy AL. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.